and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today I suspect we have got a really special puzzle for you. Um, but a couple of admin points before I get on to today's puzzle. Uh, I wanted to mention, for those of you interested in the cryptic crosswords, um, we are trying to get our Instagram account, uh, which is Cracking the Cryptic, up and running at the moment. Uh, here it is. And each day we are doing a clue of the day, which is a short video reviewing uh, a clue that we liked from that day's times crossword. Um, so we've been doing this for about a week now. Um, and if you enjoy your crosswords, then you might want to check that out. So that's Cracking the Cryptic on Instagram. Um, now, apart from that, a big thanks to all of you who have uh, sponsored us on Patreon. Our Patreon puzzle for January is going great guns. We've never had such a high response in terms of solutions that you're submitting. So we're glad you're enjoying the puzzles. Um, and um, yeah, we are very appreciative to those of you who sponsor us. Thank you. Um, now, what is today's puzzle? Well, it's a classic Sudoku um, and it's been constructed for us by Derek Neal. Now, Derek has been a, a bit of a star on the channel. Uh, last year, he, he um, created a whole new Sudoku technique for very difficult puzzles called the slot machine uh, that was very popular. And he's also got into constructing puzzles and his puzzles feature in our app, our classic Sudoku app. So um, do check that out if you find that you enjoy today's puzzle, um, which he calls the Stinger. And he has uh, been compiling this while ill with the flu. So um, he's, uh, uh, I don't know whether that's put him in a good mood or a bad mood, but clearly he's had some time. He's created what looks like a very uh, pretty Sudoku for us, um, though I suspect it's going to be rather difficult. Um, now, if you want to have a go, and I do recommend it, then uh, click on the link under the video. That will take you to a web page that looks just like this one. Now, let me just check my mouse is working today. Yes, I think it is. In that case, I am going to have a go at this. I've been looking forward to this, so let's go. Now, I can put a one in, in there, look, because of these ones. In fact, the ones, these ones, limit ones to those positions at the top. Um, do any more with ones? If I can, I'm not seeing how to. Um, twos though, those twos mean that's a, that's a two. Let's put that in. Now there's a two in one of those two squares at the top because these twos prevent there being twos in those squares. So there's a two in one of those three positions. Uh, two's in one of these two positions. Oh, and actually that's nice. Look, this two prevents there from being a two in that square. So in this three by three block at the bottom, in the bottom right, we know the two is in column eight or column nine. And because of this two, we know in this box, the two is also in column eight and column nine. Therefore, the two in this box must be in column seven. We've not managed to put a two in column seven yet, so it's gonna to have to be up here. And it can't be in either of the top two positions. So that's a two. That's a nice find. So we can put eight pencil marked into those squares. Nines look point at that square. So let's put a nine in there. And in fact, we've got two nines here pointing at this box. And with this nine, that forces that to be a nine, which means that's a nine. And that's a nine, I think. Yes, we've done the nines now. And in placing this nine, we took the position of a pencil mark one. So that must be the one up there. And there's a one in one of these two squares and a one in one of these two squares. And eights, look, these eights point at that square, so that's an eight. That's an eight. Well, there's an eight down here. These two squares have got to be three and seven to complete the box. And the three seven here is quite nice because now look at row three of the grid. Now, look at these sevens dotted round. We've got sevens 
in one of these two squares, a 7 here, a 7 here, and this 7 here forces a 7 into one of these three positions in this box. So where can we put a 7 in this row? Well, I think there's only one square, that's that one. And that's got to be a 7 as well, because of these 7s down here. And now we've got We've got a weird pattern. I'm not sure if this is something I'm I meant to spot here, but certainly the this square of numbers is sort of shouting out at me that I should appreciate something about this. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what it is. But that is interesting. Okay, well let's let's carry on anyway. So let's have a look at this column because we've got so many digits in it. We need a three and a five to complete the column. There's a five over there, look. So that's a five and that's a three. So we've now got another limb of this shape in the middle of the puzzle. I don't know if you guys are all spotting something off the back of this but I'm certainly quite interested in this shape um, right let's carry on anyway ah sixes look these sixes I mean this is a six um, five here locks a five into one of those squares six um, now what Maybe work a bit more on the sixes, see if we can find six in one of those two squares at the bottom. Uh, now, I think what we're probably going to have to do now is to have a look at some of the rows and columns where we've got lots of digits. So let's have a look at this one. We need a 3, 4 and a 5. So this square can only be a 3 or a 4. Those two can be 3, 4 or 5. So that's not that good. But look, we've got 6 digits in effect in column 1 and we need 1, 5 and 6 to complete the column. Right, well that square already has a 5 and a 6 in the row, so that is a 1. That locks a 1 into one of these squares, that locks, oops, wrong pencil marking. A 1 into one of these squares because of these ones. Now we've got mirrored 1s in column 7 and column 9. So we know that the 1s now in column 8 of the grid can't appear in those squares or these squares, so must appear in one of those three positions, so that gives us another pencil mark and I'm going to take everything I can get. Now these two squares therefore have to be 5 and 6. Now can we resolve that? Uh, I'm not sure that we can. Bother. Okay, well let's try let's see if we can find another this row's now got six digits in it, so we need two, three, and four. I oh, know that's no use. Uh, they they can both be anything. Let's have a look at this column: one, three, five, and seven. Uh, no. Definitely struggling here. Three, five, seven, five, seven. Oh, actually, there is a seven there. That can only be a three or a five. So oh, that's annoying. Look, there's nearly a bent triple there. If this square wasn't a 3, let's just look at that for a second. If this square wasn't a 3, then we would be we would be able to put a 3 into this square. And the reason 
is that whether this square is a 4 or a 5, there would then be 3s in one of these two positions. And that would rule out a 3 from those two positions, because that whether the 3 was here or here, there could not be 3s in those two positions. And if there are not 3s in those two positions, that would have to be a 3. So can we eliminate a 3 from this square? Ah, <laughs> ah, wow, okay, yeah, this is, this is absolutely stunning. <laughs> this is a very clever, this is a very clever trick. Ah, oh, goodness me, we have, we do have to think about this square, I think. If, especially as regards these positions. And we also have to think about this little fellow here. Now, have a stare at this grid and see if you can notice something really rather wonderful about this arrangement. And this is absolutely stunning construction because Derek has definitely led us here. This, this is a journey and we've taken it with him and wow. So what I think Derek wants us to notice in this position is that there are now exactly four rows of the grid where the number three can only go in four different columns and that is a that's why it's called the stinger because this pattern is called a jellyfish it is a rare rare pattern in sudoku but let's have a look at row three, row four, row six and row seven here and ask where threes can go. So you can see threes can go in those positions, these positions and these positions. And that's because we've got this long line here, this the square pattern limiting the positions of the threes. But it's also because of this three in the center of the grid, which I think is the only three in the puzzle. And that's ruling out threes from this square, this square and this square. So it's allowing us to apply the same restriction in terms of the columns threes can go into to uh, rows four and row six that we can apply, obviously, to these uh, to row three and row seven, where because of the big square in the grid, the threes are obviously locked into those four columns. So this is this is gorgeous. Now, what does it mean though? You may say, well, it's a very pretty pattern, but what can we tell as a result of this? Well, let's just work through that. If we know that these four rows um, have to have their threes in a subset of four columns, we don't yet know how these threes will be arranged, but we know for certain that, let me just you know, put one configuration that might be possible. You know, the threes in these particular rows have to go in column one, column two, column eight, and column nine, somehow. I don't know how, but they have to, they have to do that. And now, once we know that, we know that in column one, column two, column eight, and column nine, there cannot be threes outside of these rows because we're always going to have to put the threes into row three, four, six, and seven. So what does that mean? Well, very particularly, it means something quite profound for that square, which is the one I was looking at. I wanted to eliminate a three from this square, and now I can because I know that there must be a three in either this position or this position. Therefore, I can eliminate the three from this, this cell, and that is gonna give me my three by virtue of the Y-wing, which is obviously not in and of itself an easy technique. Uh, I call Y-wings bent triples, by the way, because if these three cells were all in the same row, we would have no difficulty in identifying that they formed a triple on the numbers three, four, and five. Now, the hard thing here is noticing that they are they are still a triple, but they bend. So we can't eliminate three, four, and five from the rest of this column in this row, but we can do this logic that says this square 
the middle square of the bent triple can only be a 4 or a 5. Now, if, it, if it's a 4, that's a 3. If it's a 5, that's a 3. So we know in the finished solution, there is either a 3 here or here. Therefore, any cell in this grid that sees both of these cells cannot contain a 3. And those two see this cell and this cell. So these are not 3s. Therefore, this, we've got a 2, 4 pair now, must be a 3. Now, maybe this is enough. Now, what I haven't done, of course, is check the other cells restricted by the jellyfish pattern. So let's just have a quick stare at this and see if we can... So, for example, there can't be threes in either of these two squares. Or this square or this square. Now, I'm just trying to step back from the puzzle and think about whether or not any of these squares are particularly restricted. I think we probably are going to have to check this. So this square, if it can't be a three, it, two, three, it can't, it's got to be two, four, five, and seven. There's a two there, so four, five, or seven. So that is not likely to be important. This square, uh, one, three, five, six, seven. So one, five, six, seven. Ah, that's a bit more restricted. So that square is a one or a six now. Let's check this one. Um, so this is going to be restricted by virtue of the block, I think, the most. So one, three, five, and six, but it can't be a three. So this, so this also is a one or a, so there's a one six pair now in column nine of the grid. So two, three, four, eight. So that's got to be three or four. This obviously can be a three because this is part of the jellyfish. Um, two, two, what did I say? Two, three, four, eight. So two, three, eight into this square. Ah, oh, that's no use. Two, three, and then two, three here. Ah, that 8 was giving us an 8 up there all along, so that's annoying. I could have put that in. I hope that's not important. It locks an 8 into one of those two squares, look. But that's not important. I'm relieved about that. That would have been annoying if it had blown all this logic up. Um, right. Now, what do we need to do next? Two, three, seven. That square's got to be a two or a seven. That can be anything. Six, one, six. I feel like this one, six is important. But a one, six in column nine and a five, six in column one. So this is a skyscraper pattern. What do I mean by a skyscraper pattern? Well, uh, how's the best way to explain this? Let's we know there will be a six in one of these two squares. We know there will be a six in one of these two squares. So if the six was here uh, in the finished solution, we know there would be a six here. If, on the other hand, this the only other position that could arise would be that this was a six. So if there is a cell in the grid that sees both of these squares, then that square cannot contain a six. So this square, for example, cannot contain a six. And Let's just have a look at that and see if that gives us anything extra. So this can only be a 3, 4 or a 5. 
I don't believe it. It can be. That's no use. It's not. It's not in. Ah, now does that. Ah, but maybe in this row now that locks the six into this square. Which would be helpful. So let's just check that logic again. Either this, if this is a six, we know this is a six. That's definitely right. Because the six can only go in two positions in this column. If on the other hand, the only other thing would be this would be a six. And then either way around, this cannot be a six. And there seems to be no other place to put a six in this row. So that is good. I am comfortable with that. That is a six. This is a five. That's a four. That's a five. Three, four pair now. So that's uh, not a four up there. Five here means there's a five in one of these two squares. Um, these two squares have got to be six and eight. These two squares have got to be three and four. That's useful because that means that's a four. That's a three. Four, four, okay. So now there's a three look in one of these two squares at the top. And that's nice because that's gonna form a two, three pair. Which means these two squares have got to be five and seven now. These, and that now, this six is gonna resolve which of these squares has to be a six. So that gives us a six here and a one here, which gives us a one here. That took the pencil mark of a six. So that's all forced. That forces the six and the eight. Oops, I'm going mad with my pencil marking now. This square's got to be a three. That's gonna resolve the three and the two. What a puzzle this is. How, how many, I feel like I've had to use an awful lot of clever techniques to get this done. Now that should be a three. I think it's still working. I'm gonna be so upset with myself if I've made a mistake. Five, seven. Um, now we need a one and a seven into these squares. Now the seven over there helps me out, doesn't it? That forces the one and the eight. That gives me an eight down here. That should make this a four, which makes this a four, this a two. And up here, we need five and seven. That looks good. Yes. Oh, what a soul. I've, I'm proud of that. Um, Derek, do let me know whether I've done that the way you intended. I thought that was stunning. This idea with the square and the three in the center to reveal the jellyfish. That is that's quite some setting. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought. Um, I thought that was brutal, but brilliant. See you next time on Cracking the Cryptic. Mm -hmm.